about our gifts and talents and our natural groove of like your affinity of what you know that you love to do. Um, things that you know that you haven't done yet. I want to acknowledge that. And really your true desires. Because those desires, things we have affinity for, things we already know that we do well. Like we really are here because of that. And we're here to give it. And like give it at our best. And so if we have found ourselves where, I gave an example this morning, like someone's supposed to be a woodworker and they like in their twenties, you know, they go and work with wood and it's like splintering, you know, it's not really showing up the bowl that they're, they're working on and they go away from it. But yet they still have that strong affinity to work with wood and they come back around, they've studied sacred geometry and like now they like feel like ready. And so they come back to that same groove that they naturally have, you know, an affinity for or a, um, a calling to do a desire. And then they show up and do it. And now they, it's like butter, that bowl just, it comes right out. And so that for all of us, you know, we obviously live lives within lives when we have many gifts and talents, especially when we keep opening up to who we really are as the great I am presence. We know that we actually may have like you know, nine lives within this life <laughs> that we've got to master all sorts of trades because, you know, that's part of us really coming into the greater oversoul, you know, and then coming into the plane of existence may have us actually requiring ourselves to practice different archetypes, that kind of mastery, like, you know, maiden, crone, um, leader, etc., or like literally like like uh, trades or, or things, skills that you have that you're meant to do. So, you know, you were a nurse and then like the next 10 years you, you know, worked at a garden and you just keep opening up new versions of yourself. Welcome. You can either do, you could sit cross-legged up on the massage. You could be down here. Welcome. We also have Lonnie coming in. Blessings, blessings, radiant goddess. So we, whether it's archetypal that we've had to like go through different archetypes. And I find that as we are balancing, not balancing, mastering these archetypes, we really start to stabilize the throat energy center. And that was, it becomes this, again, this filling out of not only your individual soul makeup, but the bigger you. And that's why the oversoul that we are, meaning sometimes, you'll see me draw this out, that your oversoul, like a big cloud being, is overseeing the soul that you are. And so you may feel like, you know, each time you go through a new identity, that literally you lose your identity. You lose this orb packet. It comes undone at the seams. And like, you're just kind of spaced out. And you don't know who you are. Because like, you're literally coming undone of that old identity packet so that you can allow the, the oversoul, the bigger you, whether we call the oversoul the causal self, or we call it, you know, our higher self consciousness, this greater consciousness is literally working with you to become new and to become a new packet, which may have a different trade, different archetype. And so it's like having grace and understanding that you may be coming in and out of phase and in and out of who you know yourself to be. But ultimately you're coming into the bigger clarity and the bigger presence of the oversoul, which you then start understanding, I am the higher self. I'm not talking to my higher self, even though it may be necessary some days or some moments in time because you're needing that guidance and you don't feel like you're embodying that. But you really are, as you're coming into mastery, you are becoming this bigger being. And then ultimately, you become the wholeness, the plane of existence, you know, pure consciousness. You know that you're acting out this play and this avatar 
but yet you know really we are all each other pushed out. I know that you guys are really me pushed out. Like I love myself enough and I accept myself that I am able to like sit with you all and you all show up and vice versa. So we keep growing in our presence and being a bigger packet until like I said, eventually we're all of it. And that's the I am presence. That's when you start to realize, wow, like everything here is for me, by me, through me. Everything. And so what Spirit really wanted to get across today was about these individual identities that have gifts and talents. And for you to acknowledge, have you... Have you mastered your gift and talent? Like, let's say, if, you know, like there's one strong one up front. So raise your hand if you feel like you're living out, you're like practicing a massive gift and talent right now. Everybody? Raise your hand if you feel like you're not doing it yet. Okay. Maybe. Looks like you're, you're in between. Or you're in between. <laughs> yeah. You're on, you're on okay. Road. Yeah. Raise your hand if you feel like you know there's something. You don't even know what it is. <laughs> right? Like, cause, like maybe you're coming undone at the seams and like you're literally midair, like coming into this next version. And that may literally have you you know, the, the different experiences or, um, hi, the different types of experiences that's been have a label. Sometimes it's been called a walk-in. So raise your hand if you feel like you had a walk-in experience where you've walked into yourself as a new being. And almost do you, do you find that you forgot your old self, right? So walk in, if you don't understand, know, know that terminology, it's like state, some people feel that literally my, I'll tell you my story. I cried and cried most of my childhood. I didn't want to be here. And then I had a brain injury at nine and went to a coma. And when I came out, I was essentially a walk in. I was a new being. I was revived. I was like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to be working with healing arts. I read Louise Hay, um, heal your body or no, it was Carolyn Mace. Anyways, those were like my first two books of like dropping in and no one even knew what that stuff was, you know? And I knew like, I'm gonna be helping people. And I was vibrant and I was happy. I went from crying child, nonstop, 24 seven, angry that my father left at one to like happy and ready to help. So my mom would be like, oh, you're a walk-in, you know? Like you're, you're the, the next version of you dropped in. So it might feel like that, or it may be something totally different, but yet you know that you keep jumping into new identities. So we have an opportunity though, as we fully have our self-worth back online and we love ourselves, when you truly do love yourself and you, you may have to like fake it till you make it and you have to like build in the programming to your fascia, to your subconscious to love yourself. Maybe you never heard I love you. You know, maybe you didn't have parents who were like very lovey-dovey. They didn't tell you that they loved you. Um, or they did, but you couldn't hear it because of some past life trauma that you came in with that you just couldn't accept that. You may need to be building in love and know what that feels like to receive love. Because part of us tapping into our gifts and talents is us accepting that love, being that love, and knowing we're worthy to be the best self. So the self-worth as well, like knowing you are fully worthy to have it all. And why are you worthy to have it all? You know? Because you're here. You're here. Because you are it. You're all of it. So you're worthy to have yourself. And you're worthy to have this whole experience. That's when you drop in to the bigger presence, the omnipresence, the omnipotent the ineffable, meaning the unnameable, you start understanding, wow, like this is a much bigger game than I ever realized. And it's all for me. Like I literally, I, we are all having an individual experience that's just for us. And it may be, if we actually really could document this in quantum physics or quantum mechanics, 
we all may experience this whole t time together differently. You know, you could have thought in your version, I was staring at you the whole time. But in your version, you, I was staring at you the whole time. And that's what it's like. The As you have self-worth and self-love and you start building in that, everyone loves you. Everyone adores you. Always, everywhere, all the time. You no longer will have a story that someone doesn't like you, that so-and-so wasn't, you know, their best self. It is just memorized in our fashion, in our unconscious, subconscious, that would keep it to be otherwise. It keeps the others showing up from the memorized lower self split off point of view that you forgot your God. You forgot that you're the I am presence. And if that like makes you tremble inside when I would say that to you, or if someone watching this, that you're God, we were made in the image. We are gods. We are all gods and goddesses. And if that word messes you up because you know that it means good, which means German king, and it was part of the programming of a time for control, release that. If it's source, the better word, if it's, you know, the presence, if it's the ineff ineffable, unnameable, I can't even put a name to it, right? But you're it and you're just pretending to be, you know, a little, not a little, but a big being. And so we're here to wake up to the whole dream, wake up to the game that we are find ourselves in. We are very masterful, crafty play gods and goddesses, sorceress that created this experience to be in the way that it is. And we're awakening to the divine feminine. The divine mm -hmm. feminine is on the rise because we're calling bluff everywhere. We're calling like our last class or two classes ago about all the domes. We're finding everywhere we domed, meaning we took on belief systems that were just usually patriarchal, like dominant, masculine dominant, because that was just the wave of the natural order of this game. It goes feminine, it goes masculine, it goes feminine, it goes masculine. And so we're calling bluff on anywhere we got brainwashed and pigeonholed into like being small and thinking that we had to like bow down to something outside of ourselves as a separateness. As a wholeness, it's me. I'm going to bow down to me. I love me. I love you. You know, I see, I see the beloved in us. And I like nurture and honor and I'm like humbled in the presence of every being. So we're clearing any domes still. And we know that there's a dome over our head, meaning there's a veil or like a, a ceiling keeping us small because things aren't going the way it's supposed to go. In the higher realm above the domes, above the firmament, it, when you're out of body, near death, lucid dreaming it all the pleasures of physicality are there but it's not but you're not physical that's the way it's meant to be the heaven on earth the times that we've lived in higher timelines where we have all these keys back in place we think apple and apple arrives it already does that but we put steps in front of it to get the apple to come to us because we believe them in place to keep that that linear controlled lower gross matter position in place when we get all of our cities all of our superpowers back because we remember who we are or we get all these keys that we're talking about then we we're gonna we get good at materializing things in front of us because we get rid of all of that disbelief of the steps in between as well and we just think it and we we know it we come into the knowing and so it is so i know that my word is bond that creates reality that spins and if I sing it or if I do it poetic, like when I get channeled, I'm talking with y'all and you all, you get, get channeled and talk, you start po doing poetry, you know, like rhyming, you know, that's, you know, you're dropping into like massive builder with word, massive builder with clear thought. That's why you keep your thoughts as stellar as possible. You catch, you do mental diet check and find out when you're thinking low. And you're like, clear, cancel, delete that. Delete, delete. Right? You put a command to the biocomputer, to the fascia, to the system that's memorizing. You say, delete that. And it has to. It's part of the rules of the game. Delete that. And then you may watch multiple realms go on. Because you are tall, 
even if you're five or four something and you don't consider yourself tall, your big being is huge. And so you're able to see all the realms at once when you're on, when you're channeled, when you're in wholeness. And you may see like the weirdest thing in front of you and you don't pay any mind to it. It's not that you're rude or insensitive. It's just that you know that you're not meant to look at that and give it energy, but you're aware of it. And you may be doing like a silent prayer. Like, I'm so grateful that you know, these eternal souls are having their emergence right now with the emergency signal. I'm so grateful they're arriving. Their eternal soul is waking up. They're having their near, near death or they're having their you know, dark night of the soul to actually wake up. Like, yay, we celebrate it. And then overlapping that, you see a little girl dancing in a field. And overlapping that, all around this, the same view, you're seeing like five thing, scenes going on. That's when you know you are, you're actually straddling many realms at once. You see a homeless guy singing. You know, that's realm four. You, you start to understand and you can even be a spiritual technician and ask, what realm is that? On realm one, everybody's still going through their duality, their, all their opposites. They're still checking their right and wrongs. Okay? Realm two, three, and four, you start playing with your, your superpowers of the elements. You start mastering as you're, as you're coming into realm one. Okay? Otherwise, it's seen as like the underworld, underneath the firmament, under the dome. Forgot who you were. <laughs> Literally, creepeth down under, surname, last name. You rise from the dead. You, you remember who you are. And you enter realm one, two, three, four. You start playing with all the elemental superpowers. You go up your central channel. The door hole from one is to realm one. The door hole to two is realm two. Three, same thing with the elements. Earth, water, fire, air. They all have gateways and mastery of those elements. And as you get to the heart, to air, like I said, I, I'll, I reference this a lot, you'll see a lot of the homefuls. You'll see everybody in Pinellas County who lost their house. They just got to, ah, like start to experience realm four because they let go of all the density. And they wake up, oh, I don't even actually need anything. And I'm still happy. And actually, you know, like if you come out of the different hurricanes, and different events like that, thinking of the one we had maybe nine years ago or something, you know, we were like living on a Clearwater beach, camping outside. We didn't want it to end. The power, you know, electric came on two weeks later, like, no, because <laughs> we were so blissed out, you know, because we remembered who we were as a family, as a tribe, Bar you know, meeting with the neighbors, all that. So then you go to realm five. And you start realizing, again, a lot of what I'm talking about, the I am presence. And you start really mastering ether, meaning the plane of existence. You realize it's all you pushed out. This was all a dream. So you awaken from the dream and you're, you're, you're a watcher. And you're literally walking around here going, look at all these dreamers. This is so cool. And you see all the individual souls who are still on their journey at realm one or below. So it's quite the game that we're in, right? It is, it is fun when you get the keys back. And where we're at now, we're mature enough. We have enough keys that we start thinking bigger and world create. And so what, God was on my heart about this morning, God consciousness that I am was like, like I said, gifts and talents. Are we using them? Is there more coming that we haven't like tapped into? And if it's not there, then know that you are worthy. Start making necessary action steps. You know, like if it's like a, something you're going to do, like start doing something of, like connect with it, you know, s call out to the ether, send me, a, send me somebody to help me with this, learn about it. Who knows this? And all of a sudden, someone walks in front of you. Oh, I'm a master at this. You're like, oh, you came so quickly. <laughs> so the other thing was about gifts and talents. Um, understanding that 
If you are manifesting, looking to manifest, meaning you are a master manifester, everything we've all manifested in front of each other right now, we are master at it. We did it. We master every single now moment that we see something in front of us. We manifested all that. We projected mm. it out of our penile. We waved out of all of our energy centers, all of our micro energy centers, our acupuncture points. Our main driver, the, the quantum reactor, is the heart energy center. It's the main driver. It's a joystick. I can smile and like go up. I can frown and go down. Smile and go up frown and go down. Literally, you spin the light particles from the emotion, the emotion. And so when we're looking to manifest something specifically and it hasn't arrived, there's usually conflicting belief systems, right? So if it hasn't arrived yet, but there's a belief usually around your self-worth and your self-love that you don't feel worthy to receive it. Or that you still still think there's a two, that there's somebody else other than you. There's only one of us here. The I am, pretending to be nine billion others. <laughs> so when you rise back to the occasion at source seat at the I am presence, and you know that if you desire it, of course it's meant to be. If you close your eyes and you can see it or you can feel it, of course it's meant to be. The, the most grandiose desire that you have, of course it's meant to be. So as, as Neville Goddard says, you know, behind your two eyes, when you close your eyes, that's God. God is your imagination. And so we're gifted back our imagination knowing that that was actually our biggest tool ever. And so the other part of that was that if your manifestation, that which you desire is not shown up yet, even though everything's possible, there could be some of your desires that aren't coming from wholeness. Like you're having the desire, not from a wholeness place, a oneness place, knowing that you're the I am, the I am presence, that literally you close your eyes, you visualize it, you select and focus on it, and you open your eyes because you know who you are, it materializes instantly. But if it's lagging, it's because you believe in time or some of these, these you know, belief systems are butting heads or these versions of ourself, not as an eternal soul, but memorized personalities, memorized wounded child stuff is butting up against the I am presence. And so you've got to make peace. We have to make peace with those versions of ourself and find why isn't it happening yet? If it's a belief system, I just don't believe that it can happen because it feels so big. Then I want you to check. Is that desire coming from wholeness where you know who you are as the I am? Or is it coming from a limited lack version of you? Because if it's coming from lack, then you definitely will take a long time to manifest it. It's the embodiment of the knowing of the I am that you are. And when you close your eyes that you can see it, you know it, you know you're, you're, you're getting this great idea that you're supposed to make a lot of money and build a school. You're supposed to like give your gift and talent and let it fully come in and then stream that stream of light particles that we would call currency into a school. And you check in, is this coming from my wholeness? Yes. Let's say the opposite. I really want, I don't know, to date that guy and you're married or something. <laughs> <laughs> is this coming from my wholeness? No, you know, it's coming from lack, the lack of the love that I'm seeking from the other that actually is supposed to be me getting it from me and me allowing him to actually give it to me because I've memorized the father who left at one Right. And so that all the unavailable men that I dated in my whole life were just the memorization of the unavailable father. And so I was never allowing myself to give that, get that love. So speaking to that example, as I started really loving myself and like loving the, the reflection in front of me that is here and showed up for the divine assignment and I allow him to love me allow all those things to start be the allowance and I visualize it I memorize it now I've got the most you know beautiful being serving me loving me 
you know, buy me gifts, buy me a car. Because I started memorizing that he loves me. So from the complaint that I put the pot the wrong way on the counter, you know, 1,200 times over 14 years, now it's like, oh, you're doing a great job as I'm in the kitchen yesterday. Yeah. So it's this, again, this embodiment and this allowance that we're start. We're, when I say we, I'm like, I'm starting to really get it. And now we're like coming together. Now we're a tribe tonight, today of three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's eleven of us, like that, you know, we're getting it. And we're ready as a tribe of divine feminine on the rise. Yes, we have masculine and masculine is needed. And it's awesome. But that divine feminine is your flowing presence. The presence that just shows up and knows that it's arriving because you closed your two eyes this morning, you saw it. That's a divine masculine. Divine masculine in my, in my rule book is all the blueprinting I do, all the formulas. You walk into my house, I got whiteboards. They're magnetic, literally. Whenever God gives me a formula and I draw it on the whiteboard, most of my life since my 20s, it happens instantly with a whiteboard. You could do it on paper, but I end up having to burn a lot of paper with that practice. <laughs> Literally. You know, I'll, I do a fire here every day with people's notes if they don't take them. So, does this make sense? Any ahas or let's, let's, any sharing our ahas before we go to the next part? I feel like... An affirmation that I had a long time ago with Michael Wright says, I now have enough time, energy, and resources to complete all my heart's desires. And that's been like 12 years ago. And I watched that just happen, 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 happen. This one caught me off guard. What do you think it was? Because um, everything was so perfect. It was perfect at a level that I created it. But now it would be a new perfect. But it really, I didn't see it coming. And I think that's been the biggest lesson for me is I didn't see it coming because usually I can see things in the future. Didn't see it. I just wiped everything clean like the whiteboard. Yes. And did you have any other greater understanding of why you didn't see it coming? Just didn't expect it. Everything was too, so perfect. Mm -hmm. In both homes. Yeah. One up north and one down here. Just walk in and start living, start teaching classes start having people overnight, start doing fasting. Not going to happen this year. But it's been 22 years that I've done it. Right. So it's time for something different. There it is. Mm -hmm. And that's it. It's the, the grand occasion that we find ourselves in as big oversouls coming together, world builders, that we needed to have a washout, especially those who, who are intuitive, myself included, in really couldn't see it coming because of what wants to be rebuilt. It's beyond. Mm -hmm. And some of those gifts that you're going to bring to yourself, that or better, you know, if you say to yourself that or better, mm -hmm. all this or more, all this or more is sometimes a surprise. Mm -hmm. It is the unknown. And so that also requires us that if we haven't like, a knowing that there's more. Like if our gift and talent is more, we don't know what exactly what it is. We know we have some new superpower, like trying to like set itself up within us. We don't really understand it. We don't really get it. Mm -hmm. Those unknowns by taking the that leap where there's no step, that footing where there's no step, we know that that's the celebration point. Mm -hmm. So we're in this grand celebration of that consciousness that we know that something better must be coming. A new build out. And we need these, like I was saying, the domes, we need them to, to flush out. Because things get so caked on, so many, I mean, how many thoughts do you have in an hour? Like a ton of thoughts. Every thought's creating, creating a, a reality. Every thought's creating a thing. So you got all these layers and then you had bindings of separatism because you didn't believe that you were the I am creating the whole thing. 
unconsciously, memorizing the tissues, memorizing the magnetics of the, the grid from old fractures, from old Akashic records, like the Atlantean flood or, flood or things like that. Mm -hmm. It needs to have this wash so that we can actually, you know, viscerally move the energy and then allow something to rebuild and come undone at the seams. A deeper part of letting go. Yeah, a deeper. That we didn't even know. Yeah. I feel like I've done this backwards. <laughs> I really do. Um, I came in the world. Life was absolutely phenomenal. I didn't have the best childhood and that was really young, but I was always happy. I was always involved. I was always busy. I was always madly in love with everyone I met. And at a level, I feel like, I mean, that's what I'm here for, to love the world and elevate. But it seems like That joy and that belief that everything is wonderful has diminished over the years. And I'm not quite sure. I'm sure it's a huge series of events. Yeah. But I'm not sure how to clear that all and get back to it. Even though I have a flooding moment for it, I'm perfectly happy. Everything's just fine. And then I plummet again, like I have been the last few days. And I can't seem to maintain and go back to the ease and grace I had as a young girl and a young woman. So, yeah. uh, like I said, yeah. I just feel like I'm doing, I came in like rip snorting. Right. And it, that's kind of what I was just talking about. Like, it's such a big packet of unconscious material that, yeah, you came in with the keys, you had them in hand, you were like unlocking every door with happiness. Yeah. Right. And then great. now we hit this next part of the golden age that's requiring us to literally dismantle a huge entity of thought form that we didn't even know what the heck it was. And I downloaded us last week about a big portion of it. And if you missed it last week, I tried to upload it, but spirit wouldn't let me. <laughs> I tried to do it three times and they were like, no. Hmm. But we'll get there again. But the big, go ahead. One thing I think about too is human beings don't like living in the void. We came from the void, but when it really arrives to us, the void isn't familiar. Your doingness, your happiness, your joy, all these labels that you were, now you're sitting in the void. And human beings don't like sitting in the void. Yeah. Oh, we don't like the unknown. It's scary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. So I want you to tune in to one desire that you have. One like really big desire. Well, let's close your eyes for it. Tune into one really big desire. Cough that out. Let it out. Whoever's going to cough. I want you to either hear it to, from yourself, see it from yourself, like, but dial in, think it. And then I want you to ask, are you desiring that from a place of wholeness? To say yes or no. Wholeness meaning you deserve it, you're worthy of it, it's already there. You're already embodying it. Or are you desiring it from a place of lack? You're gripping for it, you're squeezing for it. It's coming from a separatism, separate place, lower version of yourself. No judgment, just want to know either or. Is it wholeness or is it coming from lack? And then open your eyes. I won't leave you hanging if you were coming from lack. We will fix it if you didn't already. 
but it, it could be both. Bravery here, goddesses. Anybody want to share what their desire is and what you got? Yeah. You know, I'm wondering that um, if there's a difference between wanting or knowing, and there's a difference between knowing and feeling. Mm, that's good. And my thing is, I'm a procrastinator. <laughs> and <laughs> okay. on my table, there's all this stuff that needs to get rid of. And I, I'm like, man, I got to keep cleaning it up. But I just keep adding to it. And I'm like, and, and I realized, like today, today was like the first time ever I woke up. I know what joy is. But all of a sudden it was like, oh, the joy of order, the joy of cleaning. And I'm like, what? <laughs> the joy of cleaning? You know, that does not, <laughs> that's not you know, that's not, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then listening to you, it's like, oh. So before now, I wanted to clean from lack. Mm. You know, I want I want to clear up my space from lack. Mm. I gotta clean. I gotta clean. And then after today, after the now, it's like, oh, I should clean from wholeness. Yes, the joy of from cleaning. joy. Yes. Yeah, from joy. And that's the difference. It's wholeness <sighs> or joy, regardless of what. Yeah. That, that's like but it's different now it's like it's not coming from here yeah it's like oh you know yeah so you're embodying the cleaning and it will happen much easier sometimes it'll materialize instantly a girlfriend will have your house clean today or something you know like you're like oh my god or you instantly do it because your magic comes fully on mm -hmm. and it's easy and it's easy Anybody else want to share their big desire? I'll show okay. you. Okay. Go first, Bridget. It's my healing center that I want to have. And it's definitely coming from wholeness. Yes. My thoughts before were, oh, so much work. The things you got to, all the million left. And now it's like, it really does open so much more joy because so many people are going to be served in a different way that it's like oh. right it's like so chills awesome yes so, but again it took me a long way to get here and i thought i was going to serve women in a different manner and the resistance for the last five years and like to be on the other side of it oh man yeah priceless so yes, and it opens up when it's coming from wholeness. Literally, it materializes out of thin air in front of you. Like you, that house or that land's been there this whole time. You drive by it every day. You never saw it. It's literally, oh, you know, it's glowing. They call you, hey, you know, like all the things literally just magnetize to you. And you're like, all I had to do was be worthy and like really come from wholeness and know that this is actually meant to be because I already have it in the ethereal and the presence that I am beyond the body and the presence that I am, I'm meant to live out all those desires. And it's a disservice if you're not because you're not embodied. And then you're gripping and you're seeking and you're coming back in another timeline and another timeline and another timeline or another, you know, nine lives within a life and you keep coming up to that. You know, and you're like at that cycle again, that opportunity shows up and you don't take it because you're afraid. Or no, there's no way, I'm too small. Why, how could I have that desire? That's not who you are. You are the I am that is all those things that you desire. And when you come from wholeness, it will materialize so quick. And that means money, it means everything. It will all bend towards you. When it's coming from lack, it bends away from you and you're bending towards the world, the separate. When you get back in the seat, it all, the whole reality, you, you're a master of quantum mechanics. It all bends to you because it was meant to be. You came here to give your best gift, your best talent. And if you cycled back around another incarnation, cause it was draw, it like called you to do it. You came here to do even better, like to do it, to the, to the max and to wake up the cast of characters along your way. Lestia, what was yours? Mine's just, just be, 
and be okay with that. Okay. Without having to feel like since I got here, I've always like, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? And like, the thing that I really got was just like, it's just okay to just be right now and just take it in and just be your full self and go like and support the cast of characters. Like that's maybe that's what you, you where you, that's maybe where I'm at right now. Yes. Because the other stuff, it feels like I enjoy doing it, but I feel like I'm forcing myself to do it, you know, and like because I can. And it's just because you can't doesn't mean you should, you know? It's like sometimes you just, just being present, being yes. there, being able to be available to people because you're not so consumed in so many things. Yeah. So that's what, for me, it was just like, and then from there, everything will come with that ease. But in trying to like, mm. where, where am I? What am I supposed to do? It's like, that is like, I think that's where my, the foot situation came, where it's just like, you slow down. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all it's just going to happen like that. Yep. And so when you asked about the being, it came from wholeness. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, just chill. And that's it. <laughs> that's the millionaire of the being. The godzillionaire is asking you to be. Anybody else want to share? I'm sitting back watching it. Just watching it all happen. And even Pauline's amazed in what's happened in just a month. She's just mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. Just sitting back and watching it. Watching it all, I mean, mm -hmm. when it comes to like talking about the house being rebuilt, yeah. the magic that I'm watching happen over there, it's like, <laughs> I mean, I get the calls from the angels, mm -hmm. you know, literally an angel calls and I, I made an example of it. It's like, it's, it's either me, God romanticizing with God playing with itself. You know, it's either me pushed out like having the phone call come in and some magical guy wants to come help today and right. he's there helping right helping daniel mm -hmm. so daniel because daniel got pneumonia and went down because he was clearing up his atlantean flood days so it's either you know whatever way you want to look at it but you know it's not real like mm -hmm. it's not the traditional real mm -hmm. when the guy calls you in the middle of the night mm -hmm. angel on the line Every one of them has been an angel. Yeah. And I'm playing with myself, mm -hmm. you know? It is, yeah, it is fascinating. Yes. The whole, every, and then we become, that's what I mean. Then the whole thing becomes this most amazing your play. This is all for you. We're all playing out for you. Like we're all here, literally playing the character for each other to finish up those archetypes, to finish up and help give me the gift to be available, to be present, you know, like to be able to serve each other with our gift and talent, even though it's just you pushed out. Yes, you're the real soul and I'm not saying you're not real. We're just getting to check off those right, wrong, good, bads, have the full worth, give the full gift, live out the full desire. Know that we were God incarnate at that level that built out this framework. This framework may not be as the God I am that wants to live on. Parts of it, we know. You know, but for me, what I shared last week, I find my hand in all of it. I mean, I know that I created it all. I'm not like I'm angry, although I still, part of why Spirit would let me post that is because I still had a tinge of anger. There's still this unconscious fascist stuff going on with me that I, I'll get confused as I tell the story about maritime law, especially around the babies getting born at the hospital and all that with the placenta. And I just get so like feisty, you know, and I'm sharing it. And Sarah's like, nope, you can't share it. You haven't mastered that yet. You got to be like neutral. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because it's like, why did I do that? Why would, why would I have ever done that, you know? When we understand magic and we take out all the feelings of it all, we understand how and why we would do it that way. The magnetism. Just working with the elementals, you know, building this from 
building this, even this avatar, how we built it from the elements. So, okay, let's get ready for our meditation. I wanted to show you, can I show them that? Who knows what time it is? I have to, I do have to leave right at 222, or not right here, I've got to leave at 230. 10 till. Let me show you one more thing. And then we'll do our meditation. So I had a great download that we are always, it's, it's an oxymoron. We're always moving forward, but we're not moving. So as light, we're always vibrating and it seems like we're moving, but actually it's the frames are just, we're focusing on the frame and the next frame and the next frame, but they're infinitely all there. And we're also just focusing in and that belief system, the collection of belief system is magnetically stacking up light particles to create the reality we see in front of us, like a printer. We're like a 3D printer. And so we're like print, 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 print. And then the avatar, when it feels like we're driving the car, the sensations are built into the avatar, the body, to make it feel like we're moving. But we're not. It's just print, 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 all in front of us. And so that's one download reminder that's been with me for a while. But what Spirit was showing me was the infinity. And I did a video about this, but I'm hoping a little bit more comes out about it. And that the infinity, here we are in the now. Okay. And it seems like we're moving forward. So here we are. But really, it's just the light vibrating and spinning. And so we're spinning. So time is the rotation of spin of a light particle. So as a light particle spins, that's how we make time. So if this is a light particle and this magnet represents, you know, being up front, when it spins once, that's one second, two seconds, three seconds. Okay, so time is just a construct that's, that's through measurement of the rotation, how many times it's rotating. So it seems like we're moving forward along this, but actually we're just kind of like going through this infinity. And so what seems like the past, okay, in the past, because I'm moving forward this way, actually becomes our future when we get there. So our desires, our gifts, our talents, you know, they may seem like they were in the past, but then we come up to do them again. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's like saying that which, that, that which I want or desire is desiring me. Yes. Yeah. Right. And so we're looking at time and movement, but essentially all these realities are already happening at once, you know? And that's why I say when you close your eyes, if you desire it and you can see it and you're embodying it and you're feeling it, I feel it. I feel myself, you know, let's say it's a golden spoon. I feel myself that golden spoon. I can touch it. And then you open your eyes and, you know, someone's like, oh, I have a golden spoon. Actually, this one, last yell brought me a golden spoon one day recently. <laughs> right? And there's the golden spoon. Right? So did I say this now or then or what, which is which? It seems like Lustiel brought the spoon a while ago. What if that's my future? And I'm living in reverse. <laughs> so we're untangling this web. <laughs> so what Spirit wanted me to, to realize is that I kind of unpacked it here, but when you want to manifest something, we want you to start telling yourself it already happened. Like, you know, to speak it in the present, like I'm so glad that my home is redone. It's so beautiful. It's so nice and new. The floors are amazing. But to tell yourself, I'm so glad it's already done. Like it, and then you close your eyes, it already happened because I can see it. And what happens is that will speed up the manifestation process because it, your mind starts to go, oh, it already happened. Instead of gripping and feeling like you're like 
trying to get it? Am I worthy enough? Or is it going to, when's it coming? It hasn't come yet. Did I say the wrong thing? Did I not hold myself, my posture right? You know, was I thinking a negative thought and it, it bounced that opportunity away? When you tell yourself that it already happened, it then, like I said, becomes your future and you ride up to it. And then the other thing they showed me, I'm drawing this right, but that infinity is never really a closed loop. It's just that, imagine these are all infinities. It's hard to draw from here. And it just stretched out. Infinity is forever. Yes, so you're constantly moving forward. And it just seems like you're going through this infinity, or if you're looking at it from a vertical standpoint, it's spinning. Horizon, it's like an infinity stretched out. And it seems like we're going forward. And at these cross points, the reality presents itself. So the biggest message was like, you're never gonna miss out. You're just gonna keep giving yourself the opportunity to do what it is that you came here to fully do and embody it, because it already is. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. I wish it felt like that way sometimes. What do you wish? <laughs> what I've always wished is the world to be healthy and happy. And it is, right? Everybody agree? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I believe it. We all are like affirming together the world is healthy and happy. Now, and anywhere we memorize it otherwise, delete, cancel, no thank you. And now I project that so, because I am the I am. If I don't, then I think I'm separate, and I believe that they're unhealthy and unhappy, then that's all that I get to, vis to witness forever. <laughs> and forever is a long time. At realm, creepeth down under below the firmament. Okay, let's do our meditation. So get comfortable. If you feel like you're supposed to sit up. For all you creators out there, you magical beings of the I Am Presence, if you are divinely aligned by divine appointment to work with me in coaching and mentoring, I highly suggest that you check out in the description my link tree and my offers. And let's go ahead and link up at link tree and do that which we came here to do together to wake each other up to fully fulfill the dreams that we already have set forward that we've already selected you know in your heart who you are i do have a council of 10 arriving to do the crystalline creatrix coaching program 10 spots for 2025 so sign up for that if you need to do a discovery call let's set that up if you're ready fill out the intake form Otherwise, on that link tree at the very bottom, you're going to see a free gift from me. Please go ahead and work with this embodiment gift. This is going to help you launch into massive miracles and truly doing the practices that I do, that all my clients do, that truly get us lined up for that which we know is meant to be here now. I divine appointment. Until next time.